Welcome to our very first Twisted Sage Studios Tools webinars. Today we're going to be working with one of our more profound tools is the Golden Fire and Light Wands. Now these particular tools will, they'll work automatically, kind of like the tensor rings in that when you have a ring, it's already activated, it's doing the work. Um, the wands are that way as well, where they're emitting a frequency. They're bringing through that golden fire and that golden light, which the golden light wand is the longer part of the rods, which is the harmony ring. Um, the standard Teotihuacan unit is what makes that specific measure. Then it's the handles, whether it is the larger wands or the smaller wands, that's bringing through the golden fire. So when we've seen these things, when we've seen these energetically just sitting, or perhaps you're wearing one as a pendant, that it's creating just a small field around it of that golden fire and that golden light. So you can wear it as a pendant and you can use it in a passive sense as that. But this is a tool that is one of the ones that's requiring us to do more of an active role if we want to get the most out of these tools. Part of that is an activation, that activation of the sacred heart. So we'll be going through that activation here later. And if you do not have one of these wands, we will give you the attunement to it, which basically is when we go through the, the journey work, the meditation, that you will be able to access this energetically without having to have the physical one. And that would be the attunement to this particular tool. So passively, you can wear them. The mini wand, just as potent as the large wand. Um, a lot of people will feel that the large wand is more potent and that's because, you know, we, we are a co-creator with these and, and then we just like to make things more potent when we compare the size. But if you just have the mini wand um, and you're just wearing it as a pendant, there's a fantastic way to wear it in a passive sense. So some of the active ways to use it is to run energy. To run energy means just it's a soft, simple intention of seeing energy run out the tip of the wand. Now for me, when I hold up my palm and I just make circles or figure eights, it's my intention already that I'm running energy, that this is taking energy, sending it right out the tip of the wand. So that's a very simple way to use it in an active sense, is to just running energy. So when we're seeing that this guy is going into the physical cells and it is raising the frequency and vibration of the physical cells. So that's where we're running the energy. And you can do that, you know, we'll discuss doing distance work with these tools as they are quantum energy tools and we can do work throughout all time and space. And we'll get into both of those throughout this process. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on this tool, it started out, we were looking for a dowsing rod that would do the work that we could with consciousness. And that was to move geomagnetic lines, close portal vortexes, cross over waywards or ghosts, clear entities, all that fun stuff. When we were trying to make this dowsing rod, my sister Brenda and I, when we were trying to create the etheric tool, because all of our tools are created here first on that higher dimensional plane, and they're anchored into the physical through these sacred measurements, whether it's the wand or the rings. So when Brenda and I were first trying to create this energetic tool that would do everything we wanted the dowsing rod to do, we found a golden light rod. It was this light, just a light rod. It looks about 18 to 22 inches long. And it was a golden white light. And after we worked with that for a little while, we found that it wasn't completely activated. So my sister came in, 
did the activation with this golden light wand and then it got it has this fuzzy appearance because it has sound it has vibration as well as multicolors that go through it and so that particular tool is not what we created because all the other tools that we create here at twisted sage studios my sister Brenda and I create them again on that higher dimensional plane first and then bring them into the physical through the measurements. This particular tool, we were seeing this golden light rod is older than our galaxy, perhaps older than the universe. And it is something that started to shift our paradigm when we were using it because before when we were using tools here on the physical, like we're running Reiki, we're running energy, things like that, we're, we're doing it right here and it's coming you know from the heart but also our intentions and so it's us that are doing it when we ran into this particular tool it is the soul that wields the energetic counterpart to these guys because some of the things besides working with the geomagnetics and such that these tools are doing that the wands are doing is that it is also clearing timelines and realities for the person and that's something that we'll get into here today. And when you're doing that, that requires the higher perception than right here from the human. So this was kind of the beginning of us surrendering to our soul and allowing our soul to do the work. Because again, it's seen when we're holding on to this physical one that our soul is holding on to the energetic one. Um, so the little booklet that you have well, actually, um, some more about the wand first. Um, we first found that golden light rod. And so we called it, that's what we called it, was the golden light rod. And that's the one that was clearing timelines, realities, moving portal, uh, clearing portal vortexes, either shutting them down or turning them into something beneficial, moving geomagnetic lines or clearing them of um, any of the en energy and information that comes through that's non-beneficial. And let's see, clearing the timelines, realities. And then that was a super powerful tool. And that was our very first one. We made a large one. And both the handle and the long part were the standard Teotihuacan unit, the STU that we make the harmony rings from. So then we were making little ones, just a small brass wand as well. And then we found the golden fire. Once we found the golden fire, um, that's when we actually made a second wand, just this little guy right here, uh, that golden fire measurement. So we had the golden fire wands for a while. We had the golden light wands, then the golden fire. And we combined the two together by putting in the golden fire on the handle of the large one or the small one is the golden fire measure. Then the rod itself is that standard Teotihuacan unit that STU measure. So these two together were bringing through the golden light and the golden fire. And then that just amplified this wand greatly because we're already using our, our soul for doing the work with the golden light wand. Then the golden fire is more just a part of our soul's light. So that's part of the activations we'll do here today is activating that sacred heart. Um, and that just allows us to better use these tools. So now we'll go into the booklet. So you'll get this little booklet with every one of your wands. It's, we call it the Harmony Handbook 5G edition. Now, we originally made this, as you see, for the mini wand, the little generator, and a cell phone tab. So it tells a little bit about using all three of those tools. And it's very just short, concise, as you've seen. So it talks about the sacred space of the heart as where we begin. Because when we go to do any energy work, we need to come from that sacred space of the heart. And these tools just allow us to get there easier. So when we're actually holding on to anything in that golden fire, that is, to help us, that is helping us drop down from the head back into the heart. It is creating that field that pulls us there. So we do this all the time with just the three breaths, taking that breath from earth into the heart, 
that breath from source, soul, creator, God into the heart as the second breath and that third breath of breathing them both together within the heart and mixing that with you. So earth, sky, you, you're grounded, connected, centered, and in the heart. So that can happen very easily when you're using these tools. So practicing three breaths is a, is a huge, it, it is very much the essential part of the energy work that we do with these tools is being in the sacred space of the heart. Because again, when we're here and we're using our human perception for doing any of this work, it's, it, it's not the same. We're only working within a certain space. When we go into the heart space and we do the work, one, we're not, one, when we're in the heart space, we're not coming at things out of fear, out of necessity, things like that. So when we are anchoring columns of light into a cell tower, we don't want to be in that space of fear because all that does is that is us here and that is us feeding any of the issues that we're trying to work with with these columns of light. So we got to be in the heart space because then that way we're out of fear and we're actually doing something more than spinning our wheels. So the sacred space of the heart, we'll just walk through that really quick. Um, and again, you can have your wand with you. And if you don't have a wand, it is okay. Um, because walking in the sacred space of the heart is as simple as the three breaths. So you can close your eyes or you can leave them open and just picture your heart. Within your physical heart is your light, your soul's fire. You can send that light straight down into the earth, connect with the heart of Mother Earth, and she sends that light straight back up into the heart. So we breathe that unconditional energy, unconditional loving energy right into the heart. The second breath, we connect to source, creator, God, soul, however you see and say that. Breathe that energy into the heart. And in that third breath, we breathe in from both earth and sky, both from source and earth. Mixing that together within your heart. And then that drops your consciousness from the head back into the heart. And then you are also grounded and connected and you are that column of light. So you can practice that with the wands by just holding it and taking a single breath and dropping into the heart. All right. So that is the sacred space of the heart. So next in our little booklet here, we move right into light columns. Now, working with light columns, you can go into the heart space and you can just visualize and intend a column of light that is going from source, soul, creator, God, and the earth, and it's a two-way flowing energy column of light. And you can visualize and intend on creating this column of light someplace, like right in front of you. And that column of light will stay there for about eight days unless you put your attention back onto there. So creating columns of light is something that we've used in a lot of the work that we do throughout the years. But then once we bring in this golden light column, it is as simple as holding the wand up and visualizing this column of light that goes right through the wand. So it's kind of like breathing in that earth and sky into your heart, but instead you're watching it go earth and sky and going through the wand itself. And that is creating that golden light column. So it is that golden light column that is doing the, doing the work of moving geomagnetic lines, clearing portal vortexes, um, and that style of thing for doing the environmental work. And then we get into the golden fire. 
So the golden fire is is actually the the sacred heart, the trifold golden flame of the heart is what we see the golden fire as. It's part of your light. Now, the golden fire is something that, <clears throat> the golden fire does clearing of ghosts, waywards, entities, things like that, because as they come into that field of the golden fire, um, anybody who comes in that field of the golden fire, it is going to bring that reminder to the soul of the sacred heart, and that activation can occur instantly with people but especially with those who are not incarnate like a ghost or a wayward that happens so much easier that they receive that sacred heart activation and part of that sacred heart activation is the soul coming in to do that activation so when a ghost or a wayward comes in within that field of the golden fire they receive the sacred heart activation the soul comes in and just takes them across instantly so that's one of the things that we use the, the golden fire for. So when we add the golden fire to this column of light, then when we are anchoring or, or to this wand and we are anchoring that column of light of the golden light and the golden fire, that's been one of the most powerful tools that we use for just daily work for everything, for the clearing work of environmental, for our own connection, grounding, our own healing work and working with others that is something else that we'll do in this process is we'll work with others and we do that through a distance by going soul to soul with them so before we start actually doing the columns of light let's work with the golden fire now in our booklet it talks about activating that sacred heart by using your wand and just wanding your palm so if you went through there with that booklet and you're just not touching your palm, you're just running energy right into it. We're seeing that that is opening up that meridian that goes right to the heart and that brings that golden fire in to activate the heart, that sacred fire. But we'll go through the process of doing it through consciousness work for anybody who may not have a wand at this time. So again, we're gonna go into that sacred space of the heart you can close your eyes if you choose or leave them open. Taking in that deep breath from earth into the heart. Taking in that deep breath of source, soul, creator, God into the heart. Taking in those energies both together into the heart, mixing that with you. So you stand grounded, connected, and as that column of light. Next, see your soul standing in front of you. It is your soul that does this activation. Or else you can see this golden fiery hoop out in front of you from about your sternum to your throat. Some people might see a fiery disc with wings. Whatever it is, it's just that intention of bringing that into the heart, into the chest, taking in that deep breath, Again, it's your higher soul self that does this activation for you. And it just activates that golden fire within the heart. So as it activates that golden flaming heart that will spread throughout your entire body, you can watch that as it moves from your heart through every cell of the body, in between every cell, all the way to your toes. And as that golden fire expands out, it just raises everything in frequency and vibration. It does amazing, amazing clearing work. You can send that out into your emotional bodies. and that anchors right into the heart. So now as you have that golden fire within the heart, then we can better use this wand because now when we run energy with it, we are bringing through that golden fire as well. Or if you run energy out your hands, you are now bringing your light, but you're also bringing that golden fire 
along with it. So now when we anchor a column of light, we can just visualize using the wand. I like to use the wand as just a visualization because I can hold it up and it's just representing a column of light. Again, we start within the heart and we just watch as this column is connecting from earth to creation, to source. And as we see that, so let's say we're going to anchor that column of light right here in our living room or in our space that we're in. We just hold this wand out and we just visualize that column of light connecting into the earth, connecting into source. And it's the golden fire and it's the golden light. It really is that simple to create that column of light. And again, you don't need the wand. You can just simply use the wand as a visualization tool, but you can just simply visualize because when we're in the heart space and we use visualization and soft intention, then things happen. And what I mean by soft intention is we don't want to go in from the perspective of the mind and try to make things have a specific outcome or look a certain way. The whole idea of using or of surrendering to our soul is that is such a higher light that it has that higher perspective and it does the work so much better than us being limiting and limiting what we're doing from here. So it's just part of that whole new paradigm of doing the work by surrendering and using our light. So again, you can create these columns of light anywhere that you can remember seeing or you see a picture of some place. Any place that you can connect with, you can create these columns of light. You don't have to be right there within that space. So if you can think of a cell phone tower or a municipal water tower that is near you that you'd like to anchor this column of light in, Let's just have that visualization right now. You can close your eyes if you wish. And again, as you're taking those three breaths, that breath from earth into the heart, that breath from source creation into the heart, and that third breath connecting both of them, you can do that at the same time over top of that cell phone tower or that water tank. And just visualize that happening, that light connecting, flowing through. It's a golden light. It could be colors, however any of this presents to you. And it has the golden fire. There's no wrong way to do this work or to create these columns of light as long as you can do it with simplicity and from the heart space. You can make it your own way. So anymore, when I drive down the road and I look over and I see some place to anchor a column of light, it just happens within an instant. In these columns of light that we create with the golden fire and the golden light, it's unlike the first columns of light that we were doing that are just simply an intended column of light from source into the earth that will only stay there for eight days. These particular columns of light will stay there for indefinitely if needed. So it is, it's not us that has our attention onto that column of light to keep it there. It is our higher self. So using these particular columns of light, um, you know, like I said, we, we did the cell phone towers. We can do the waterways. When I was a municipal water operator and I first started anchoring columns of light into water towers, I could see where it changed that water within the water tower and it followed all the way through the distribution line into the person drinking the water, back out into the, the septic and back into the earth. I mean, it, water is a really phenomenal one to anchor columns of light with. So you can do it in the oceans, you can do it in municipal water, the rivers, the lakes, 
mud puddles, it doesn't matter. You can change the frequency and vibration of water very easily. As we all know, if you've ever looked at Dr. Emoto's work and how our emotions affect water, well, think of how our light affects water. That is even more profound. So, and then the electromagnetics. Um, with this whole... With this whole big scare with the 5G, um, the, the 5G millimeter waves that are coming in, it's, it's been interesting to, to see this. So in Minneapolis um, in 2018 during the Super Bowl is when they did one of the initial 5G rollouts right at the Super Bowl. And right after that, we had a friend who's a holistic practi practitioner in the area. And he noted how so many people were coming to him with hypersensitivity to electromagnetics after that. And also a gal called who had our golden fire tools. And our golden fire tools are one of the best for restructuring electromagnetics. And so she had one of the generators, like what I wear on my wrist, one of the generators in her home. And she called and said, well, something's, you know, these tools aren't, aren't doing it. And, um, when I looked in on it, I could see that the, the household electric within her home was just this bright red. Um, it just didn't, that's where that non-beneficial energy was coming from, was from the electrical field of the wiring within her home. So when we started to look where this was coming from, we saw that there were spaces outside of her home that were emitting that frequency. So we just anchored these columns of light into those. And when we did, it changed the whole energetics of the home. So we took that, the energetics of those columns of light that was transforming that 5G, and we put that into the etheric templates energetically into all the golden fire tools. So it was the, those columns of light with the golden fire and the golden light which we were seeing that was transforming the 5G. And so now that's into the, the energetic, the etheric of all the golden fire tools now. Um, so, you know, that's why we did the 5G edition on this particular one was because it was right after we learned ab about the 5G stuff in 2018, uh, early 2018. And so, you know, there there is a lot of scare with the 5G stuff, but you know, I've really been trying to promote out there about how we are such powerful creators that we can anchor these columns of light everywhere and we can transform this stuff. Um, so when you anchor a column of light into just a standard, uh, one of the golden fire and lights into like a standard cell phone tower, it is then trans it, it's transferring those frequencies of love and gratitude, of the golden fire, of the sacred heart, is transferring those frequencies. Um, the, the cell phone transmissions or the communication tower transmissions act as a carrier wave to carry this beneficial energy with it. And so that's been really a phenomenal thing to watch, kind of like with the water, how that energy flows through the water. This will also flow through the electrical currents. It'll flow through the, the communication towers. So you can also anchor this into, you know, if you have a electrical transformer in your neighborhood or else you're driving through the country and you see those great big, um, you know, about a half a block wide by half a block wide um, electrical transformer stations that have all the different, um, um, have all the different wires that come in so that they're like the 69,000 volt transmission lines. So when you anchor this into those spaces, that carries on those transmission lines and that goes everywhere. So these columns of light, we can affect a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of people and the earth because every time we're anchoring one of these columns of light too, it is raising the frequency and vibration of that space and the earth in general. And so that goes back to also another one of the uses is within the cemeteries or a home that you see that is, you know, a haunted house, a place that just doesn't feel right to you. You can anchor those columns of light of the golden fire. Now, there's some people who, who still, um, you know, have an issue with us going around anchoring columns of light in places 
because it used to be that we would have to ask permission of another when we're doing the work. So like if you have your neighborhood that's really funky, you know, um, you can still anchor columns of light and it is not going to affect anybody's free will. When we work from within the sacred space of the heart and we anchor these columns of light, it is up to the soul to choose whether they receive any of these activations of the sacred heart or whether they are on a specific soul path that they don't need this clearing work done or whatever. It, we're, when we're working from here, it can be an issue if we're trying to do something. But when we're here and we're anchoring columns of light, we're doing that in a whole different way. We're do, going soul to soul. And so we're creating that space. Um, so anchor those columns of light into cemeteries. And again, it does that activation with the ghost, the wayward, their soul comes in and takes them home. And then they become whole and complete within themselves. Um, so working with other people. Now that's something too, that I believe we talk a little bit about that in our booklet. Um, so we've gone through the golden fire the heart space. Um, so working with yourself, we'll go through this, uh, this little process too here that we found with the golden light rod, which is clearing timelines and realities that no longer serve us. So we'll go into this space again, and then that way after this, then we can start working with others from within this space and offering them the same processes that we go through, the, the clearing work, the activation work. So again, we'll go to the heart space. And again, you can close your eyes or leave them open. We take in that deep breath from earth right into the heart. That deep breath from source, soul, creator into the heart. That next breath that brings both those together within you and it connects, it grounds you and it connects you. And you are in the heart and you are that column of light. From there, you can be holding that golden fire and light rod. And if you don't have this tool, you can just have the intention of holding this tool because it's your soul that holds it. So as we hold the physical one, our soul holds the energetic one. So as we hold that golden fire and light rod, we can have the intention of being clean and clear. That's clean and clear throughout all time, space, dimensions, realities, clean and clear of programs, beliefs, and emotions that no longer serve us. Our soul knows that intention we take in the breath and we release and we just trust our source soul and just goes out, gathers up all those timelines that no longer serve. And you can take that breath again and you can just keep releasing because as we are that onion that we just keep peeling, peeling those emotions that no longer serve, those beliefs that no longer serve. And it's our soul that makes that choice. This space just helps to release it easier. So you can do that daily and some people will feel that shift every day. So as we're in that space, the heart space, and we have that golden fire and light rod in our hand, now let's picture ourselves standing someplace that you wish to clear, someplace that you don't have an emotional attachment with, like the Capitol or the Vatican or whatever. Let's go to school or to work or to a hospital. Picture yourself standing there. 
you are grounded, you are connected, you are that column of light. And you have that light wand in your hand. It's going to be our intention to clear that space environmentally that will either close portal vortexes, cross over waywards, ghosts, entities within that space. It'll move geomagnetic lines or clear geomagnetic lines. So as you're in that space, take that deep breath in. And as you release, this bubble goes out around you and the wand. And it's like everything disappears for a moment. And then source and soul just rebuild that again. Leaving out, clearing all that no longer serves. And when you work within the environment like this, you can go back at any time and take a look. And it's like you're doing the work at that time. So this particular tool transcends time as well as us working in different spaces. So as you are standing within that space, you can invite in another person. You can invite them into that sacred space. It's like there's this bubble around you so as they step in, anything that no longer serves stays on the outside of the bubble. And you can hold up the wand to them. And they can choose whether to take it or not. Because this is where we're going soul to soul with another person. Many will take that wand. And you can just watch as they ground, connect, the sacred heart might activate. You might see that bubble of light expand around them. As you're holding the space for them to do that same clearing work that we've done for ourselves. And receive the same activations if their soul chooses. Again, when we do this, we're not trying to project anything, not trying to fix or heal we're only holding the space for them and their soul to do what is in their highest and best good. All right. So that is the basics of anchoring columns of light of the activations now if you have the dowsing rod the dowsing rod is exactly the same the dowsing rod is creating that column of light so you so we'll do a webinar on the dowsing rod at some point in time but i'll always refer people back to this webinar to where they can use the dowsing rod as the wand because that's what that sacred major is that's what the handle is. So the dowsing rod, the large wand, the small wand, our intention of having that golden light rod, they're all the same because we're using that golden light rod. All right, so I think it's probably time to start taking some questions then. Um, so if anybody has any questions, you're welcome to either send them on to the chat or if you are on phone or the computer, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask away. And if anybody needs help unmuting, just wave your hand and I'll see if I can give you a hand. So we also have an older video um, of the Golden Light Rod Attunement, which is on YouTube. And um, that one just walks us through basically the same stuff that we did, but that one did not have the golden fire with it. So 
How can you use the rod to heal people or animals? Thank you, Judy, for the question. Um, basically, there's, there's the couple of different ways that you can work with people, animals, plants. Um, one of them is that you can invite them into that sacred space that you create by just um, taking those breaths, going in the heart space, and visualizing that bubble going out around you, that of the golden fire, that of your light, that of the wand, that this bubble just goes out around you, and that creates that sacred space. And then you can invite them into that sacred space. And even a plant or an animal, you can hand them the wand, you can visualize that column of light being anchored into them or into a specific organ, into a specific situation. So if you have a dog that has a specific situation or an animal, um, you can watch it anchor into that. That's the same with, with us. If we have um, a situation at work, home, school, whatever it is, and we just see that situation as a ball of energy, we can anchor a column of light into that. But again, we start from the heart space because if we get into some of those things that are emotional to us, or that we have to have this intended outcome, we need to step back into the heart. And then we're just anchoring that column of light there. Um, doing that on trees and plants is pretty fantastic because you can watch that, you know, you can see the transformations with animals and plants easier than you can with humans. Um, so that's one way to do it through the consciousness work. Another way is to just do the active work with, with the tool by running that energy. Now, when you're running energy with this, so again, to me, it's always just wanding it. It's, it's making a circle or a figure eight, doesn't matter, clockwise, counterclockwise, nothing of that matter. Um, we can run that energy to, like let's say if you have, and maybe try this, if any of you guys can feel it when you're running it on your palm, now then imagine that you're running it on the bottom of your foot. So imagine that the bottom of your foot is right here. I can feel that. So now then imagine your pet right there or a situation right there or a plant or another person. That is how we work with them on a quantum level is we just sit there, we're running energy. It's just a visualization and intention that we're running energy to them, to their situation, whatever it is. And you don't have to do it for long. If you do it for a couple minutes, that's all you really need to do it for. All right, so that was just another active way to, to run that energy. Um, all right, does anybody else have any questions yet? And for the columns of light too, for me when I make a column of light, I usually, mine are usually like 20 feet across. That's how big I see my column of light. But the column of light can be infinitely large. It doesn't have to be a small column it can be any size. Um, and I have a question. How can you meditate with the rod? A very simple way that I like to meditate with this is I'll carry the small one with me. And at any time I feel myself getting out of sorts, I can just hold on to it. And I can just use this because this is going to help me move into the heart space easier when I have this and I'm in that field. And so I can just hold the wand take a breath and go back into that heart space. And then when you're in that heart space and you have things that come up like an emotion or a reoccurring thought or a belief or a negative thought, whatever it is, you can use this to run energy to it. So that's another way for meditation um, is to, you can use this with your mind's eye while you're in the heart space. It's just another tool for your attention and intention. Can you use the rod the same way as a pendulum? 
yeah, you can totally use this guy as a pendulum. Um, one of the things that I like to do too is because it has a little hook on the bottom is that you can actually hook a pendulum right there onto there and it'll actually swivel and it makes a fantastic little pendulum, um, you know, or, or a pendulum holder by putting a pendulum on the bottom. Um, any suggestions for decorating? All right, so um, I so I had I had all kinds of fun things to the bottom of my wand. I had all kinds of energy tools, crystals, pendants, pendulums, all that kind of thing. Because to me, it's um, let's see if I have one right here, which I don't. Which yeah, I've made a lot of pendulums out of crystals, and I'll just put them right onto there. Um, and that's another thing that the wands can do is the wands you can use them for crystals. So because crystals, you can actually um, just wand a crystal and it's not only cleaning and clearing it instantly, but it's also raising its frequency and vibration. It's bringing it to its higher state. Um, so again, fantastic to use with crystals as well. And you know, and two, if you don't actively use your wand, I tell people just to put it on top of their electrical panel, their fuse box. You can just sit it there and it will be just bringing in that golden fire into the electrical and it does the same thing as like our meter discs do, our, our um, two inch um, golden fire discs that work with the electromagnetics. Any benefit to wearing these as a necklace? Yes. Um, when we first started using these wands, I mean, we were all wearing them all the time as a necklace because not only because it is bringing in that golden fire, so it's passively going to be bringing in that golden fire and that golden light into your field. But a lot of people swear that they sleep better by having one of these wands with them at night. They'll just like put them next to their headboard so that it is close within their field, or else putting it under your pillow because the wands, the wands innately only create a small field around them. And so as long as that small field is connected in with your field, it's doing the work. Um, how can you heal or increase the chi on yourself, for example, clear the digestion of impactions or toxins in the colon intestines? Okay, so again, when you're using the wand, we are seeing that when you're running energy with this, that it is raising the frequency and vibration of every cell that is coming in contact with. And so when you are, um, when you are looking to run energy to a specific organ or to the intestines, again, you can just point it in a general direction, but your intention is, is that energy that's coming off the tip of it is going into and surrounding that organ or all the specific uh, tissues. So, Again, I'm sitting here right now and I'm having that intention that it is going to the lower intestines and I can feel movement <laughs> within there. I mean, it's, it's um, just your attention and intention and being in the heart space. Um, Decording. Okay, so um, clearing cords. That's one of the things when... Um, if you're trying to clear cords that come in, this is also an excellent tool for that because this helps you stand in your light. So basically, you take that breath and you go and you stand within your light, you're in the heart space, you become that light, and you have that golden fire. So you become a column of golden fire and light and your soul light. So as you become that column, of that light, you just simply send that out around you. You can have that soft intention of clearing that cord, of sending that healing, loving energy back to where you receive the cord from. So again, we're we're not really, you know, we we just keep gotta we gotta keep coming from the heart space when we're doing that work. So basically we're just sitting there sending that unconditional love back up those cords and it clears it. And so if you have somebody that is always courting you, you can, you can also um, visualize that cord now connecting into that golden fire, or you can bring them into that column of light as well. 
and then just visualizing that cord connecting to their soul, connecting to their golden fire. Um, so that's, yeah, the, the tool is really versatile. Um, we used to not give instructions with the tools because we don't want to limit them because people are using these tools for pretty profound things. Um, so again, there's no wrong way of using these tools, especially when you're in the heart. When you're in the heart, you can do no harm. So play, play a lot. Um, it's huge. And doing that distance work, I tell you, is a huge thing too. So if you think of a water tower and you don't like the idea of anchoring columns of light, you can just sit there and wand it. You can just sit there and send that energy of the golden fire and the golden light into that water tower. You don't necessarily have to do the columns of light. To us, the columns of light are huge because it'll hold that same energy. So that energy that you're wanding is only going to last for that time that you have your attention onto it. But when you create a column of light into that same space, that column will stay there for as long as it's needed. Okay, and another question. Is there a way to connect with source and coming into attunement more strongly using the wand? Yes, it's the clearing and the connecting. Um, so we're seeing that, you know, we only have, we can only hold so much light. And so the more junk that we clean out, the more light we can hold that is our light. Um, so it's just us clearing that is how you connect more with with source with soul is and and doing the sacred heart activation that we do is huge because that is our soul's light and that is now in every cell of our body anchored into our heart and our soul light is there um, so if you just keep going into that heart space and expanding that light out and up and being that column of light, grounded and connected, it's going to be connecting you more strongly. Um, and using the wand is just simply a tool of our attention when we're doing that. So, thank you guys for the message for the uh, questions. And um, anybody else have a question here? All right. Well, that might be just about all for us tonight then. Um, I cannot think of any other information or questions I've had from the past that we haven't covered. Um, again, it's uh, we'll probably do some more questions and answers on this wand at some time. You're welcome to email me questions too. Um, we'll soon have a whole new platform of, of doing our, our tool webinars. And that's going to be coming up. We're going to be doing one here on the 22nd of July on the Shaman's Wand. So if you just go to the website, twistedsage.com, and you go under the resources page, there will be the webinar page there that you can sign up for all the upcoming webinars. So um, I thank you guys for all being here and for using these tools. Um, again, when we can use this to anchor those columns of light, it is super, super profound. Um, we are raising the frequency and vibration of the planet. We are helping all life forms on the planet. Um, you know, so, so I really do encourage you to play with the columns of light. It's a fantastic tool. All right. Thank you all. I'll see you next time.